to this key question. Do you still think it was a tragic day? Do you think that the people who stormed the Capitol should be held responsible to the full extent of the I law. I have concerns about the treatment of January 6 hostages. You deleted a, a statement that was on your website recently calling January 6 a tragic day. Why, why was it so deleted, though? I, I have all my public statements from the current Congress. You can access all of my previous public statements. From but why was it deleted from your website? Got them. We fucking got him. I feel like this is a perfect opportunity for a class I like to call Accountability 101. Here's Trump VP hopeful and verbal gymnast Elise Stefanik claiming that January 6 insurrectionists were actually hostages, free from pushback, repeating her cult leader's claims verbatim. They ought to release the J6 hostages. They've suffered enough. They ought to release them. I call them hostages. Some people call them prisoners. I call them hostages. Release the J6 six hostages, Joe. Release him, Joe. You can do it real easy, Joe. This guy, what he's done, what he's done to people. Uh, I have concerns. We have a role in Congress of oversight over our treatments of prisoners. Uh, and I believe that we're seeing the weaponization of the federal government against not just President Trump, but we're seeing it against conservatives. We're seeing it against Catholics. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so proud to serve on the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Government, because the American people want answers. They want transparency. And they understand that as you look across this country, there seems to be two sets of rules. If your last name is Clinton or it's Biden, you get to live by a different set of rules than if you're an everyday patriotic American. And here's the very same Elise Stefanik on CNN this time, as she's read aloud her own past comments regarding January 6th, in which she says, and I quote, the perpetrators of this un-American violence and destruction must be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Vice presidency, because you just said that you would be willing to serve in a Trump administration. Had you been vice president on January 6th, 2021, what would you have done? I stood up for the Constitution. I believe no, it was an unconstitutional... what would you have done if you were vice president? Okay. I would not have done what Mike Pence did. I don't think that was the right approach. I specifically uh, stand by what I said on the House floor, and uh, I stand by my statement, which was there so was you unconstitutional the overreach. Votes. There was unconstitutional constitutional overreach in states like Pennsylvania. And uh, I think it's very important that we continue to stand up for the Constitution and have legal and secure elections, which we did not have in 2020. And m the tens of millions of Americans agree with me, Caitlin. Well, the, I would say the Supreme Court in the state of Pennsylvania said that that Republican passed changes to their law w was constitutional. But it, it's notable to hear you say, given you're in the running to be the vice president, that you would have rejected those votes. Come this election, when Vice President Harris is in that position, would you be okay if she rejected the votes if Donald Trump wins? L listen, we need to make sure the election is constitutional and legal. We're talking about Democrats. Legal. It was not, Caitlin. It was unconstitutional when there was circumventing state legislatures unilaterally changing election law. I stand by my statement on the House floor. And again, tens of millions of Americans agree with that statement and have questions about the validity because and Republicans legality. Because Republicans are so in doubt about the election. No, no, no. About because you deleted a, a statement that was on your website recently calling January 6th a tragic day. It's publicly available. Why, why was it deleted, though? I, I have all my public statements from the current Congress. You can access all of my previous public statements. From but why was it deleted from your website? I only have the press releases from this current Congress. Congress. All of those statements are available since I was elected on multiple social media accounts, and you can access it there. Just so it like wasn't everyone a retraction can. of what you said. I have every no, certainly not. I have press releases for this current Congress, and the reality is, you as a journalist can go through all of my official social media accounts and find all of my previous statements. Come on, Elise, what's next? You're going to try and excuse Trump calling Nancy Pelosi Nikki Haley because their first name begins with an N? When she comes here, she gets like nine people. And the press never reports the crowds, you know. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, you know, they, did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything, deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it, because of lots of things. Like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people, soldiers, National Guard, so whatever they want, they turned it down. They don't want to talk about that. That isn't a mix-up. Uh, the reality is Nikki Haley, she wasn't speaker. Nikki Haley is relying on Democrats, just like Nancy Pelosi, uh, to try to have a desperate showing in New York, in New Hampshire. But he was so talking President about January 6th. President Trump has not lost a step. He is a stronger candidate, stronger than he is today, than he was in 2016, and he was in 2020. Compare that to Joe Biden's weakness. Well, that's actually a far better excuse than this one. I can't tell you oh how disappointing, I, how disappointed I feel every time it's I see her talk. She's a clown. 
clown. Republican Congresswoman clown. Elise Stefanik. clown. As New York Republican Elise Stefanik continues her Trump please pick me tour, she appeared on CNN alongside Caitlin Collins, where she was on a mission to appease Trump, you know, pulling everything out of the bag from election denialism to contradictions, but she wasn't to be let off the hook so easy this time as Caitlin Collins was on hand to fact check her claims. So a big part of this is that President Biden went and sat down with them for two days, uh, over the course of two days. Obviously that's the interview that you're talking about uh, where, where they talked about his age. Donald Trump hasn't cooperated. Don't you just think if he had cooperated, he could be in the same this situation? This is at the behest of Joe Biden. But if he had cooperated, don't you no, think no, he no. could be in the First same situation First of all, there is a difference President here. Biden? President Trump has, according to the Presidential Records Act, he has dis declassification authorities. Joe Biden does not have that when he was Vice President of the United States. Joe Biden also had classified documents when he was a sitting senator. That does not it is, that is not covered by the Presidential Records Act. So to say... I've read the Presidential Records Act. It also doesn't give Trump the authority to just take documents and keep them in a ballroom. This was a Mar raid on Mar-a-Lago, Caitlin, versus working with Joe Biden and saying he willfully broke the law but refusing to prosecute. But it that's is selective my point. prosecution. That's it is my point because prosecution. Trump did not hand over the documents no, for more than a year. Jim Trusty could tell you from that. The you DOJ. Just, from from Joe and as an added tidbit, I went ahead and pulled from the archives Elise Stefanik's past comments on the floor concerning January 6. Americans will always have the freedom of speech and the constitutional right to protest, but violence in any form is absolutely unacceptable, it is anti-American, and must be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now, will the endless contradictions and backpedaling put Trump off if he is to consider Stefanik for VP? Absolutely not. The only reason it might is if Trump wants to remain head liar in chief and her ability to spin whopper after whopper was to threaten his crown. He confuses Barack Obama. He thinks he's running against Barack Obama, Elise, and you know it. And if you say anything otherwise, you're lying through your teeth. He confused Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi on January the 6th. And if you say anything else, you're lying through your teeth. Well, For what? He's not going to pick you as vice president. Give up the ghost. Mm. Elise Stefanik. Yeah. That was her coming to the defense of Donald Trump. And Elise Stefanik. Stefanik. And yeah. He was so appreciative of Elise Stefanik. Uh, the woman. Elise Stefanik. Yeah. He okay. Is, he knows her really well. Right. They, I mean, he's reportedly considering her for, for his vice possible president. vice president. Yeah. So he praised. He knows Stefanik, Stefanik really, rally. really well. And he's all with it, Stefanik says. Take from it. MIT, from the greatest schools, although MIT was hurt very badly, unfortunately, by this person running it. Did you see that, the three people? How good did Elise Stepanak do? Right? What? Who, who's Stepanak? What? Hey, Jonathan O'Meara, I'm, look, I'm looking through my congressional quarterly. Who is uh -huh. Stepanak? Is, oh is, that, is that somebody from, from Oklahoma, Stepanak? Her ability to say with a straight face that she's only to be held to recent comments, ones made in a desperate attempt to get Trump's attention, is laughable. But it's par for the course, and at least someone is on hand to hold her to them. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.